What's up, biology students? Mr. Holloway here, and the topic of today's video is exponential population growth. Now, there's this professor at the university I used to go to. His name is Al Bartlett, and he's actually a pretty famous guy. If you look him up online, I'm sure you'll be able to find him in no time. Uh, but his contention was that the single greatest failing of mankind is the failure to understand what exponential population growth is and what exactly it means for a population to grow exponentially. Now, I won't argue about whether or not that's true, but exponential growth is something that's important for us to understand because it helps us to make predictions about how a population is likely to increase in size over time. Same principles actually apply to our bank account or anything that's growing at some percent per year. And if we understand how populations can grow at an exponential rate, we might actually understand a little bit more about how our bank account works. Well, whether we're talking about populations of reindeer, or populations of fish, or even the population of dollars in your bank account, all populations grow according to pretty basic mathematical principles. And if we understand those mathematical predictions, not only can we make predictions about how large our bank account is going to be if uh, left unbothered for a period of years, but we can also make predictions about how large a population of organisms is likely to become, which becomes especially important when planning for the future of the human population. So let's start with an example using bacteria. And bacteria are a good organism to start with because their pattern of reproduction is very simple. One bacterial cell, over the course of one generation, will divide into two bacterial cells. And this process is called binary fission. Basically, that one cell turns into two nearly identical cells. And if we take our population of bacteria, and say that we start with a population of 100 bacterial cells growing in a petri dish or a jar, and let's say that they divide or double once per hour. So this thing that we're seeing in our picture here, where we've got one bacterial cell dividing into two bacterial cells, that's happening to every bacterial cell once per hour. And if we let that play out for a series of hours, we can see that our population grows pretty large in not really very many generations. In only the course of 10 generations, our population of bacterial cells grew from 100 cells to 102,400 cells, which is a pretty huge increase. So let's look at a graph of how this looks. And if we notice the title of our graph here, we're looking at a graph that shows only the first six generations of population growth in this petri dish, or in this jar of bacteria. If we let that go all the way to the end of those ten generations, look where we are now, and look what kind of increase we're looking at, keeping in mind that right here is where we left off in our last graph. Now this pattern of growth, and characterized by this kind of J-shaped curve that we see on this graph here, is what we call exponential population growth. And as it turns out, all populations are capable of exponential growth if left to grow without any restrictions. And it was actually a German economist by the name of Thomas Malthus who first told us this. And he said, without restrictions, all populations, including the human population, is capable of what he called geometric growth. Geometric growth is basically the same thing as exponential growth, and if you watch our elephants appear here on the screen, you should be able to see why. But it doesn't matter, Thomas Malthus said, whether we're talking about elephants or bacterial cells or humans or birds or plants, all populations, if left to grow unrestricted, are capable of growing exponentially. Now obviously a population of elephants is going to grow at a much slower rate than a population of bacterial cells, but given enough time, that population of elements is going to grow exactly the same way and get very, very large as well. In real life, populations don't grow like that, at least not forever. Often they start off growing that way, but eventually environmental restrictions kick in and those populations hit something that's called their carrying capacity, or the maximum population size that can be supported by an ecosystem. And that's due to a variety of limiting factors that are going to appear in any real-life environment. Limiting factors like space and habitat, food and water, the number of predators, competition, disease, parasitism, changes in the climate, natural disasters. All of these things are eventually going to prevent a population from growing too large. And that can be characterized by this sort of pattern that we see here in this graph, where our population grows 
exponentially for a while, but at some point they start to run into those restrictions. Space and habitat seem to become less abundant in that ecosystem. Food and water become less abundant. There are greater chances of being eaten by a predator, greater competition for resources. You're more likely to get a disease if your population is large because it's very easy for diseases to be transferred from one organism to another. So eventually these restrictions cause the rate of population growth to slow down and eventually reach some sort of maximum point that for a while that population sort of hovers around and we call that maximum point their carrying capacity. Now because we live in a finite space, meaning there's only so much habitat on planet Earth, that means that as a population grows in size, it's also going to be increasing in population density. And as our population of turtles grows from a relatively small population to a bigger population, its population density is going to increase. And as that happens, some of these limiting factors become more intense. And we call those kinds of limiting factors density dependent limiting factors. So our high population density of turtles is going to be more greatly affected by things like limitations in space and habitat, by uh, limitations in food and water, by predators. They're more obvious to predators because there are more of them. There's going to be greater competition for resources and it's going to be easier to spread disease and parasites from one organism to the next when they're living in high population density. So all of these things are examples of density dependent limiting factors. Density independent limiting factors affect both of these populations equally. And those are going to be things like changes in climate and natural disasters. For example, if there's an earthquake that happens underneath these ponds, it doesn't really matter whether there's a low density of turtles or a high density of turtles, they're both going to be negatively affected by that earthquake in roughly equal measure. As our population of turtles grows in size and in population density, certain factors like these that we highlighted initially are going to become increasingly intense. And that's going to cause our population of turtles to slow its rate of growth because more turtles are going to be eaten by predators, more turtles are going to die from food shortages, more turtles are going to die from disease, and so their population is eventually going to level off when it hits that thing that we call carrying capacity. And at that point, our population of turtles might remain fairly stable over time, unless there's something like a natural disaster, which might cause its population to go down again, because natural disasters don't really care about whether turtles are living at high population density or low population density. So that sort of brings up some interesting questions, because all populations seem to have a carrying capacity, whether we're talking about bacteria growing in a jar or whether we're talking about turtles growing in a pond. Humans, though, are unique in a lot of ways. We're similar in a lot of ways to other populations, but we have some things going on for us that other populations don't. We have technology, we have medicine and things like that. We have the ability to study our world and use our knowledge of the world to make more informed choices that help us to live longer lives. So it's a pretty interesting question. Do humans have a carrying capacity like all the other creatures on the planet? Or are we somehow unique in being able to extend our carrying capacity upwards and upwards forever and ever and ever? Well, a lot of people would argue that humans probably do have a carrying capacity. We've just managed to raise it continually upwards over the years by advancing our technology and our knowledge of the planet. But again, we do live on a finite amount of space. Planet Earth is only so big and there's only so many places on it that we can live and get our resources. So, do humans have a carrying capacity? And if so, what is it? It's a question that nobody really knows the answer to, but it's a question that a lot of people are really, really concerned about. Because if we look at the history of the human population, it hasn't always been this large. And it's really only been within the last thousand years that the population really, really, really started to increase. And it's really only been in the last couple hundred years that we've had a population in the billions. And in the last 200 and roughly 14 years, our population has gone from 1 billion human beings on planet Earth to over 7 billion human beings on planet Earth. So we're growing very, very rapidly, just like those bacteria growing in a jar. And what our carrying capacity is, nobody knows for sure. 
But it's a question that we probably want to know the answer to so that we can make some informed decisions and start planning for our future, one that's sustainable and one that isn't going to result in the human population uh, declining due to disease and competition for resources like food and water. So that's all for our video today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you understand a little bit better what it means for a population to grow exponentially, and hopefully you remember that you can go back and watch this video as many times as you need to until you feel like you understand what this exponential population growth thing is all about. See you next time.